Watcher, happy Halloween and welcome to the channel. 31st of October, I know it's a bit late in the day, but I'm going to knock up a Jack O' Lantern, Timber Jack O' Lantern from Palletwood today uh, in time to stick it outside ready for tonight. Let me show you how it's done. Now it's been pouring down the rain today, my pallet wood's outside, it's a little bit wet, but I'm still going to break it up, I'm going to dry it off using a heat gun and then we're going to make it. Gonna try the new pallet buster on this one. Remove the nails. I don't want to get the nail holes in the um, jack-o'-lanterns. I've got two boards. Rather than dry out the whole boards and you know, dry the bits that I'm not using, I've decided I'm going to make these up to 12 inches long. We've got about 19 inches between the um, the nail hole sections, and there's also bits like this, you know, like you know tear out live edge etc where all the bark was so I'm gonna cut out some sections out the four sections out of the bits and throw the bits with the uh, nail holes away okay after sticking the just putting the the tape measure up in the air I've looked at this and I thought myself you know what nine inches is a nice height we can have a base on it I can get the whole thing made out of one of these pallet boards and this pallet board is 145 mil wide I'm gonna. I, I, I hate using the dreaded R word, but it's gonna be rustic, okay? So let's let's take it out of this board. Okay, we're gonna lose lose the nail holes as I said. So let's mark it up here. Nine inches there. Eighteen inches. There. Two marks on. We're not using face side, face edge. I use the other side now. I'm using this side because it is just a pallet wood exercise. It's going to take you about an hour. On the other end, mark off the nail holes. Keep it square. inches, 18 inches, we're not going to use a hand force saw for this, we're going to speed things up and get a jigsaw out. As regular viewers of my channel will know, I don't have a mitre straw, trop saw or a table saw, so I just make good do with what i got, hence the jigsaw. Let's take the guard off. Let's go. That's a nail hole stop. Now I'm a bit pushed for time here because it's due to start raining again at any point. 
I'm going to do this in real time, so however long this video takes, you're going to see it. It's not going to take long. I want it rustic, but I don't want sharp edges. I'm not going to use a plane, I'm just going to use a sure form. Get rid of the sharp edges. Just take these edges over a little bit. Use a plane on wet wood, really. Sure, forms a great little tools. show you everything warts and all so just gonna brush down the rubbish off the wood pull the bits off then I'm gonna brush the bench because if I'm using a hot air gun I don't really want any fires in the old bench quick job this is going straight on the floor there we go let's get a hot air gun Obviously the right way of doing this is to bring your pallet wood indoors. Have it indoors for a week or two, or maybe even longer. Certainly not fresh out of the rain. But this is not an indoor piece of furniture, is it? This is a jack-o'-lantern that's going to be sitting outside in the rain. While I'm doing this, I'm just going to take a second out to show you, but talk about a new feature I'm running on my channel. Each week, each video, I'm gonna take a uh, choose a subscriber to my channel and do a shout out on their channel. Uh, so if you want to uh, get a shout out, subscribe please, and tell me a little bit about your channel. Put something down in the comments to say why you want to be, um, why you want a shout out, what services you can find, etc., etc. And I'll take a look at your channel. And if I think it's in keeping with what my channel viewers want to watch. I'll give you a shout out. The first one, now he's already given me a couple of shouts out, so thank you, Ben. Is Tool Addict. Tool Addict is a UK uh, YouTuber. He's based somewhere up north from Manchester, a north for that. And he does videos on tools. He's got an incredible collection of tools. He just posted about a dozen or so videos where he went to a, um, a tool. I don't know what you call it. What do you call it, Ben? You call it a tool. Car works, a, a car boot sale or something just for tools. Newark Auto Show, and some of the um, tools he's got on there are brilliant. Today he posted one about U boat spanners, adjustable U boat spanners, three of them. Incredible story, he gives a nice backstory on the tools. And if you like tools, it's a channel worth checking out. He also does a guess the price competition, whereas if you win five, uh, if you get five guesses correct, he sends you a tool. So check out Ben from uh, Tool Addicts. That's my first shout out. If you want a shout out, leave a comment down below. Okay, that's that done. They're about as dry as I want them to get. Because I'm not spending all damn day doing this. They're about well, the same length. As near as damn it. A mill in it, perhaps. Right, I'm not going to... Um, 
have one two sides here and two sides here I'm going to do this in a square box so it's the same size so if you imagine it's going to be like that so it's going to be a perfect square this is the way I'm going to do that but before I do that I need to draw some sort of jack-o-lantern face onto one of the faces actually no change my mind I am going to do it this way because that allows me to get a wider face doesn't it right let me choose the best face to do a best bit of wood to do a face in knots knots that's pretty knot free that one will do that one on the top let's get a pencil let's draw something let's go for a eyes are going to be about here 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 and nose going to be in the eyes a little bit higher perhaps right okay let's just do standard jacko lantern face like a pumpkin we'll try and get our eyes about the same height no that needs to come down a bit more over there it's about the same isn't it i'll cut these out on a bandsaw i might have a little bit coming down so a little bit of a moody face there and let's have some jag jagged a jagged mouth let's put some teeth in there There we are, let's get a point on there. That's going to be a nightmare to cut out on a bandsaw. But, there we are. Let's do it. When I said bandsaw, I actually meant scroll saw. Right, let's get a, a let's get a, uh, a timber bit out. Let's cut a hole for the face. That's plenty big enough. A bit of wood. It's messy, it looks rubbish, but it'll do. Let's just take some of these real sharp edges off. Shouldn't tell. I'm no artist, but I'll do for that. Here's the old jigsaw again. Just smooth that off. be in the back up the top it's going to go there so we need a now right there okay, we're driving up and now in here but we're going to put the mark back there to put glue on the wrong face of your wood so always check always just have a little check
Okay, it's the back. It's going to be the side. Okay, there's trans subscriber marks is there. You know that's the thickness of our the timber. Some in the top. Oops, that's too far. Okay. The bottom is there. So our now needs to be about there. That's bent. Don't want to keep driving that one in. Take it out. Otherwise, when you strike it again, it'll bend right over. You get one that starts to bend and it hasn't gone too far in, take it out. So does that. A bit more glue. Okay. Put it over here because I've got the support leg and it's a lot easier to hammer into a support than it is to, in, a, in the middle of a, a workbench which will flex. Our jack o' lantern here. Let's put a lid on it. We want something to be a little bigger than this. Let's find something. It's about the right width, isn't it? What have we got here? We have got 190, that is 250, so it's going to be 30 mil each side. So, what's the measurement here? 150 would we'll make that 210. Make that to ten. Hold on, no, this way. <laughs> what are you doing, you fool? Measure twice, cut once. Yep, it's to ten. Yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> that doesn't look right at all. That's on an angle. Always double check your work. Right, let's get a straight edge. That will do. Use anything as a straight edge. Anything you come across in your workshop you can use. I'm using the side of a trowel. Doesn't have to be an expensive rocker straight edge. You can get anything. Measure twice, cut once. I've measured three times so far. 210, 210. Trust your eyes. That one there, 
didn't look straight to me at all. Back outside on the makeshift workbench now. I'm going to take this a bit slower this time. This is nicer wood. <laughs> If you see this wood, it's got a little bit of a cup to it. It's like it bends down at the edges. So if I put it this way up, it's going to look awful. So I'm going to put it this way down. It should look a little bit better. Right, let's get this upside down. And we'll just eyeball. We will eyeball it. To see. If it's centered or not. Right, okay. We'll just make some marks which we will transfer. So we know that this is about the inside there. So if we flip this over, oops, it's broken now. Oh, that didn't happen. Must have happened when I was hammering. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's at the bottom. Now we know that that's where uh, we've got to make our uh, holes for our. Uh, about there. For our um, nails. Right, I'm going to pre-drill these though, because I don't want this wood to split. we are two at the back and one on each side. Do it on the edge. No, it should not do it there. Yep, it doesn't matter. Battery's dying, that's why I've changed to the Ryobi drill. Do you batteries or pants? Or maybe it's just I've got a drill that's 10 years old, who knows. It's going to go. about there and I'll transfer this mark over and I'll know where I'm lined up in the right position. Oh I need to do this one as well. Right you can eyeball it but if you transfer a mark over to the other side Easy to get you get yourself where you need to be. Now we've got one in. You can turn it over and check a little bit more. Get a proper eyeball going. Yep. That looks pretty good. Now get one in the opposite corner. That will stop it moving around. Okay, now let's get these marks off the top, pencil marks. Why am I doing that the difficult way?
Let that be a lesson to all woodworkers. I started off wondering why it wasn't sanding. I had the bloody plastic plate still on. If you're in a rush, you slow down. Let's haste more speed. After measure twice, cut once, let's haste more speed. Tip number two. Okay, we got rid of all the marks off the top. Let's give him a hat, shall we? Let's give him a hat. This is where we can use one of the off-cut pieces with the screw holes in. What do we want? Clean or dirty? Clean or dirty? Let's go for clean, shall we? Again, just going to eyeball this. Going to make a few marks. Where I want it to go. How thick are these screws? These nails? Okay. So they're too long, they will go through. So now, we've got to make sure we go where the other holes are. So it goes into the wood. So let's make a couple of pilot holes. Okay, stick that one in. Okay. I think my I think my lantern is on a little bit of a jaunty angle. I love that word jaunty angle. The hat's on a bit of a slant. A jaunty angle. Right, bad boy's got a hat. Now it needs a base. Okay. Find a base. We've got one of these left over. What are we going to do? Do it on the bottom? Are we going to cut into it? Yeah, we'll just do it on the bottom. Okay. Workshop's really messy now. So that is one, 190. I don't care about the holes in this one. One. You can see this, don't you? Right, I'm measuring 190. Square it off. There's 190. That should be the width for the base. Bosh! Okay. Out to the workshop, the makeshift workbench in the back garden to cut the one noise. Back inside, we don't want this wood to split again, so we're going to pre drill this as well. Pre drill again, doesn't have to be too accurate. I'm going to stick three nails in. One there. We'll put one nail in, and that'll give us a pivot point which we can take the rest of the. Uh, we can pivot around, see, and line it up as we want. Okay, it's not perfect. But then this is, mm, I don't want to use the R word, plastic! Rustic. Right, I think I drilled too much there, so I'm going to have to stick another one in. Let's stick another couple in. One there. One there. Okay. I have a couple of nails. Okay. I reckon we're going to call that done. 
this doesn't really need to be finished well apart from this which needs to be finished it's a hardwood so it should last a while um, it's pallet wood the other stuff isn't going to rot so that's what it looks like at the front that's what it looks like at the back so you can get your little tea light in there shall we finish this off damn it why not I was going to put this stuff on wood dye for interior and exterior wood rustings and it's a nice light oak color it's a lovely color actually but it says the surface must be clean smooth dry and dust free this is not dry what I'm going to do because it's Halloween I'm going to put this bad boy out tonight Let's turn it around so you can see it I'm going to put this out tonight and then I'll bring it in and let it dry off for a couple of weeks and I will coat this up I will make this uh, coat this up properly so it's okay for next year and I'll um, I'll show you the finished job in another one of my videos it'll make a cameo appearance at some point happy Halloween I hope you enjoyed the video just uh, what well, was meant to be a quick one I'm not sure how quick it's gonna be uh, it'll show you on the timeline exactly how long this job took obviously I'll shorten it down by editing um, Christmas is coming up a bit too late to make a Halloween one now but you may want to make a similar job to this perhaps with an outline or fire Christmas or something like that or a no that might be a bit difficult maybe a, a Christmas tree something like that you can do something like that make a Christmas decoration out of some pallet wood that's no problem I'll probably do a job like that more towards Christmas time I hope you enjoyed it remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon see ya